There are two more rebels down there at the door. I think Ty Creed would be one of them. He's giving hand signals that he's going to come up. Did she come on? And that she'll be getting ready for this now. And then after that, we'll have a small break. We need a break after Ty Creed because he'd, he'd wreck your head. <laughs> I wrote it. You know that we're cousins, but we don't have the same name at all. I'm, I'm Creed and he's Creed, but we're the same crowd. We're the same crowd. We, we put a tail on our name and he, they, they didn't bother with it. No, sir. Thank you very much. Well, we as well. Thanks very much, John. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. It's great to be here tonight to have this opportunity to play a few tunes. Um, it's a kind of a night that we remember those who were gone before us. We remember from Berger Arthur during the week he was buried. And we remember my aunt Cumberland who was buried today.
Actually, there was a show called Dawn of the Day, just from the Belfast Harp Festival in 1792, played by a hundred year old harper, so it's a very old bit of music. Now, the last folk that we do tonight is a folk I learned from the late Paddy Quill. So, God rest his soul, he was a fine fiddle player, and he taught me this poem. First, we've got to play two harpers. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a very famous book. It's, it was in the film The Titanic, in one of the scenes in The Titanic. Sank uh, the and it sank in the end. <laughs> <laughs> the last, the last book is a, a book, as I said, I learned from the late Paddy Quill, and I'd like to remember Paddy tonight. God bless. Mm.
no thanks very much. I, I leave you over here. Come on, play feet. There's another probate who come on the stage. And, and who, who owns the Moat Organ? We don't know who owns the Moat Organ. We have a spare Moat Organ if you want anyone. Miriam and Tracy and Sinead Cronin, will you come on to the stage and, and entertain us? They're on their way now. And their neighbours are Mike and Chiquita. And they're regular entertainers at our stream. And I believe uh, we want a bit of a story. And we'll have some music and entertain us. So, sit tight, Chiquita. Cronin sisters. Chiquita, we're all the boss.
Fisher Old Ireland's the place you want to be. story no um, the joys of motoring by Christy Duffy tis me birthday next week will I be 65 or is it only 64 anyway I'm not as simple as I used to be before all me life I rode the old bike I journeyed at it near and far but one day I took the plunge and I bought myself a motor car. Now, when the motor was delivered, and with me money I had parted, it was only then I realized that the expense had only started. Oh, the driving lessons cost a fortune for the test I'd have to pass. And 200 euro for a little dish to stick up on the glass. <laughs> Oh, the insurance was a nightmare. Sure, it nearly left me broke. Oh, there was times when I regretted. I even bought the blooming oak. <laughs> then I got a letter about the NCT. Well, I was glad they were talking about the motor and not about me. <laughs> now, testing out that motor is all very well. But if I were to undergo that test, I'd not stand a chance in hell. No, the old chassis is getting rusty. <laughs> and the suspensions, they're getting creaky. <laughs> the lamps, they're out of focus. <laughs> and the water hose is leaking. <laughs> well, after several weeks of lessons, I was ready for my test. So I went on down to the centre dressed in me Sunday best. Your man sat beside me with a book upon his lap and he looked at me kind of funny when I wiped the window with me cap. <laughs> First, says he, we'll travel down and then we'll take a right. And then, says he, we'll take a left just beyond the traffic lights. <sighs> Well, I pushed the gear stick into first gear and then left off the clutch. Your man sat with a hump in him like a rabbit in a hutch. <laughs> well, everything was going grand. I was going like a bomb. Till an old lady on a bicycle round the corner chanced to come. Well, I stamped me foot down on the brake to avoid a head on smash. Your man was tangling the harness with his nose against the dash. <laughs> then the engine stalled in me and refused point blank to start. In spite of every curse and blessing, I couldn't manage to depart. Anyway, I got her going. Go out of town, says he. So I turned her around and I faced her for the open country. <laughs> Now, everything went wrong in me that could possibly go wrong. And I began to think, you know, your man regretted that he'd ever come along. <laughs> and when I reversed into a gatepost, he turned a sort of a, a yellow. Between you and me, you know, he seemed a very nervous kind of fella. As he sat there all a trembling with his head down on his knees, He'd reneged upon the viral and taken to the beads. <laughs> and as I was coming down the bypass with the old engine fairly buzzing, your man was knocked off Hail Mary's at 16 to the dozen. <laughs> well, I knew I made the odd mistake, but sure, I did my very best. So then I asked that all important question. Have I passed me test? <laughs> well, he looked at me straight in the eyes with no watery sort of a grin. You have, says he, 
Fra, I'm not going through another day like that again. <laughs> so I got me driving license and I headed home once more. And I parked me little mother proudly outside the kitchen door. No, I was fully qualified. I could drive wherever I liked. And I'd never put another leg across that old rally bike. I'd load up all the neighbours on a Sunday going to mass. And all the old ones on the bicycles moving to let me pass. <laughs> but I went into town a few weeks back just to see the cattle trade. And I went for a pint and somewhat overstayed. <laughs> and as I made my journey home, I swerved to miss a dog and lost control of my little motor and some burster in the bog. <laughs> well, my motoring days are over now and I'm back in the old bike again. Sure, when I think of all the money I spent, it nearly seems a sin. But there's one thing you can rest assured of, and that's the next motor car I'll be going off in. The undertaker will be driving, and me, I'll be in the coffin. <laughs>